I am here today to talk about one of my favourite subgenres, I'm gonna call it, of literature. And that is unsettling books. I have a lot. So, to describe an unsettling book, something is wrong. You know, from the beginning or from early on, you're kind of like, this is a bit peculiar, is everything as it seems? And obviously as the book gets on, it's not. And I love, 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 love books like that, where there's just such like a feeling of unease from like beginning till end. And then in the end, you finally realize what you've been feeling uneasy about and it's like revealed and I just love it. Bit of a slow burn. Some of these are slow burn. It's slow burn to find out what actually is unsettling, but the rest of them are not necessarily, the rest of the book isn't entirely slow burn, if that makes sense. But I am a psychologist, not a literature student, so I'm not very good at describing my genre, but I love it immensely. So let's get talking books. The first up on my recommendation of unsettling books, I have three here, but I recommend anything by this author, and that is Shirley Jackson. So my recommendations of choice and the ones that I have read, Actually, there's four, but one I only have on my Kindle, so I can't slash it here. But I have The Lottery, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, and Hangs a Man. And the other one I obviously recommend is The Haunting of Hill House, which is a classic. I feel like y'all know Haunting of Hill House by now, and I need a physical copy soon because I bought it on Kindle when it was 99p last year, read it, fell in love with Shirley Jackson, have slowly been amassing a Shirley Jackson collection since. And I wanna read Hill House again. I love it, I love it so much. But my personal favorite Shirley Jackson that I wanna talk about is We Have Always Lived in the Castle. <laughs> this cover, she's stunning. So We've Always Lived in the Castle follows Mary Cat and Constance, two sisters who live in a big house with their uncle. Something has obviously happened to the uncle. Something has obviously happened to the family. Constance is dealing with extreme anxiety. Mary Cat is our um, protagonist. Just let you know, in case you haven't read it. Um, but her sister, Constance, is dealing with anxiety, agoraphobia a little bit. She doesn't want to leave the house because she's scared of what people might say. Mary Cat just, she gives zero fucks. She does not care. She goes out and they make up, I forget what it is, but they, they make up a rhyme about the family. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it that's going to really annoy me. But anytime, you know, she goes into town because they live in an old manor that's quite secluded. Um, they're always talked about in hushed tones, whispered about behind their back. America does not care. But as the reader, we are getting a sense of unease. And obviously this is not a very long novel at all. I think it's about 152 pages all in all. And we find out what happens and it's so good. Hill House is similar, that this group of people are all kind of drawn to a house to see supernaturally stuff. Woo, it's very different from the TV show, but I prefer the book. Of course I do, because I'm a Shirley Jackson fan. Hangs a Man follows a mystery of a missing college student and it's meant to be so creepy. I haven't read this one yet, but I will be reading it this spooky season. This was based on a real life mystery. Um, that happened in university near where Shirley Jackson lived. So she was inspired and wrote about it in this novel, which is so cool. The Lottery, the short story of The Lottery itself is so good and so unsettling. Like from the start, you're like, whoa, okay, what's happening? And then you're like, oh. Shit. But moving on from Shirley, we have Eileen by Otessa Moshe. I love the cover of this, I really do. I splurge for the American one, and I don't regret it one bit. Um, Eileen follows Eileen, funnily enough. Um, a young woman trapped between her role as her alcoholic father's caretaker in a home where squalor is the talk of the neighborhood and her day job as a secretary at the boys' prison. So she is consumed by resentment and self-loathing and Eileen dreams of escaping to the big city. But you know, she just drinks a lot in the meantime. She is vividly described, uh, I forget what Moshe book comes first, this or my year of rest and relaxation. I feel this might have 
Now I feel like this might have come after my year of rest and relaxation because there was a lot of criticism <laughs> criticism that the character in my year of rest and relaxation was, you know, she was constantly described as beautiful and stunning. So Mosh I went the opposite in this one. Eileen is self-loathing, she is unhygienic, she is described as ugly, she hates herself viscerally. Um, so it's a great story. But there's a bright, beautiful and cheery new employee in the prison, Rebecca St John. Eileen is enchanted and it proves unable to resist what at first appears to be a miraculously budding friendship. In a Hitchcockian twist, her affection for Rebecca ultimately pulls her into complici complicity in a crime that surpasses her wildest imaginings. This book is a wild ride. So it starts with Eileen and her self-loathing, she hates her home life, she hates her work, then Rebecca comes into work. Wow, friend, she's delighted. And then they both get wrapped up in something bigger than the both of them. And it is the Moshe I have enjoyed most of all. I think I read My Year of Rest and Relaxation, Love Fauna, and Eileen. And Eileen, I think, has been my favourite. So it's a wild ride, but a good one. We then have The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. This one is stunning. Like, it was published quite recently, it won the 2020 International Booker, but this feels like it could be a classic, like it's wonderful. So there are these people that live on this island, very big, and things suddenly disappear. Like they wake up and the memory police who inhabit this island as well, they're isolated from the rest of society. The memory police will literally just be like, ribbons don't exist anymore and everyone has to throw out their ribbons and by the next day they will have forgotten or pretended to have forgotten that ribbons ever existed um but our main character obviously is a little bit different and when a young novelist discovers her editor is in danger of being taken away by the memory police yeah because like if they don't forget her if they continue using ribbons or whatever the memory police take them away and they're never to be seen again um, she desperately wants to save him. For some reason he doesn't forget and it's becoming increasingly difficult for him to hide his memories. Who knows what will happen next? Okay. I read this a while ago so I'm remembering now. It wasn't her main character, it was, yes, her editor. And, oh. Like this is just posed as so normal that there's these memory police that tell you that you can't remember anything. And obviously, as the book goes on, it gets more unsettling, more weird, up to like a climax in the end. And I enjoyed this one immensely. And I, I imagine most people have read it by now because it is very popular and it did win the Booker. But if it's been like sitting on yourself and you've been putting it off, much like I did for a while, it's definitely worth your time. This next unsettling recommendation is one that I actually haven't read yet. I bought recently on the recommendation of a lot of different booktubers and bookstagrammers who have been talking about it recently. And I'm so excited to read it. That is I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Harpman. This also was the translated work. It was translated from French, which is very cool. So I haven't read this one, but is deep underground 39 women live imprisoned in a cage. Watched over by guards, these women have no memory of how they got there, no notion of time and only vague recollections of their lives before. As the burn of electric light merges day into night and numberless years pass, a young girl, the 40th prisoner, sits alone and outcast in the corner, but soon she will show herself the key to be the other's escape and survival in the strange world that waits for them above. So it just, seems bonkers that you know these women are trapped underground for years i think some of them potentially like decades and i have never known men because they have been trapped in their like basement prison for a long time so i am kind of getting the vibe that this is like half the book maybe in their cages and their imprisonment and then released and acclimatizing to the world that they have never experienced um maybe a little bit like room by emma donoghue I, I don't know, but high, high hopes for this one. And as well as Hang Man, I might, might read this this spooky season. These next two are some of my all time favorites of all time. And that is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro and We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. I will talk about Never Let Me Go first. This is the book that made me realize I love this genre. I didn't realize this genre was a thing before they let me go. And I'm a, I'm a big Kazuo Ishiguro stan, so I read this and I basically have bought all of his work 
afterwards and I'm working my way through it much like Shirley Jackson. Never Let Me Go follows three students, Kathy, our protagonist and kind of narrator, um, Ruth and Tommy at Hailsham, a boarding school in England. I don't know what else to say past that um, because the beauty of this book is that you go in knowing nothing and like a spool of thread it unravels before your very eyes and by the end of it you're like holy shit. Um, I think yeah it was shortlisted for the booker in 2005. I'm gonna look up what won the booker in 2005 because how this didn't win. I have no idea. The Sea by Arthur Banwell won. I've never heard of that book in my life and this is an all-time fave so I am never trusting the Booker Prize ever again because of this didn't win. I mean Claire and the Sun didn't either, it was nominated wasn't it? I don't remember but I don't think I'm going to say anything more about this book. It's quite an intimate snapshot of their lives from the boarding school into adulthood and it's so unsettling like from the beginning it's just unsettling so I'll read you like the first paragraph. My name is Kathy H. I'm 31 years old and I've been a carer now for over 11 years. That sounds long enough I know but they actually want me to go on for another eight months until the end of this year. That'll make it almost exactly 12 years. Now I know my being a carer for so long isn't necessarily because they think I'm fantastic at what I do. There are some really good carers who've been told to stop after two or three years. And I can think of at least one carer who went on for all 14 years despite being a complete waste of space. So I'm not trying to boast. I'm not doing this book justice, but just please trust me. It's wonderful. And so creepy. Other one of my all time favorite books that is so creepy and unsettling is We Need to Talk About Kevin. This is obviously a blockbuster movie, and was it? Winner of the Orange Prize, so it wasn't Booker because I'm not trusting the booker anymore. This book follows Eva, who never really wanted to be a mother, certainly not of the boy who murdered seven of his fellow high school students, a cafeteria worker and a teacher who tried to befriend him. Oh, so from the beginning, you know that Kevin has shot up a school and murdered classmates, staff and teachers, which is dark, obviously. Um, I read this quite a long time ago. I would like to reread soon, but obviously there is a, a bulk of this revolves around like school shooting and mentally ill children um so trigger warnings trigger warnings but this book is written in epistolary format which i don't normally dig books written in letters so i was so excited to read it and i like opened it and it was like dear and i was like no don't give me a letter but the letter format lends itself to this novel because Eva can choose what to say and what she can reveal and obviously throughout the letters more is revealed. You're like what more can be revealed? We already know! He's a school shooter! More can be revealed and it kind of chronicles her life from like pre-pregnancy, pre-meeting her husband to the aftermath and I think specifically now two years later, so way after the aftermath and processing of the horrific events as well. But oh, it's so good. I read it in like one day. I read it whenever I was doing my A-levels actually, and I was meant to be studying and doing some hefty coursework. And I did it. I sat in the library and I devoured this in one day. And it was so worth it because over five years later, I am still talking about it as an all-time fave. Really weird that I'm cuddling a book about a school shooter, right? Yeah. And there we go. There is our creepy and unsettling books, which personally I think would just be immaculate for this spooky season that we are in right now. You know, like it's October. I love October. And the leaves are starting to fall from the trees. It's getting darker, gloomier, a bit colder as I am in this massive, cozy knitted jumper. It is the perfect environment to make a big cup of tea and curl up with a book. So I hope you decide to curl up with one of these. Let me know if you have any creepy or unsettling faves. I love a good slow burn reveal where something is messed up. So if you have any that think you think fit this bill, my brain is not working, um, please let me know. But I hope you have enjoyed. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time.